What's up, guys? It is Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. It is 10 13 p.m., and this video is super late. Uh, my wife closed tonight, so I have been doing the daddy daycare thing. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Um, anyway, $31 billion worth of ADA now staked in Cardano as smart contract launch approaches. Tens of billions of dollars are now staked in the crypto protocol Cardano. I'm not even going to get into this article. It's short anyway, but it just goes to show you Cardano is huge, man. And I think ETH is in for a uh, run for its money once Cardano really starts rolling. Um, not financial advice. Coinbase reveals plans for crypto app store amid global refocus. Coinbase is, Coinbase is looking to bolster its global presence, announcing it will focus on launching new products in most countries by default moving forward, including a crypto app store. Apple didn't attempt to build every app for the iPhone. It empowered developers and gave mobile users an easy way to access new innovative apps. We need to do the same in crypto. I think it's pretty cool. You have some decentralized apps floating around on Coinbase before long. More China fun. All major Bitcoin mining farms have been shut down in China's Yunnan province. Um, all major Bitcoin mining farms in Yunnan have been shut down today. China isn't messing around when it comes to the CCP's 100 year anniversary. It is the Communist Party's um, 100 year anniversary tomorrow. So some people are tying that, some social unrest and stuff like that to the, uh, the mining of all the farming. Race for Bitcoin ETF heats up as ARK Invest files registration. Kathy Woods is trying to jump into the game and get a Bitcoin ETF rolling. It would be the first one that's in America, to my knowledge. Um, I think we've been kind of waiting to see like Goldman or JP or Morgan Stanley or somebody pop out there with it, maybe BlackRock or something crazy like that. Um, Soros Fund is said to be trading in Bitcoin as well. Soros Fund Management has cleared its traders to actively trade Bitcoin. The approval to trade the leading cryptocurrency was given by the CIO. The story is developing. That's pretty big. We all know about George Soros and that whole family. Investment at Betterment looking into long-term crypto offering. Uh, Sarah Levy referred to the company. Oh, excuse me. Considering a long-term buy and hold the asset as a smaller portion of a portfolio rather than a sort of trading opportunity short term. They're a U.S.-based financial advisory company with roughly $30 billion under management. It's mulling, offering crypto investments for its customers. I think, <clears throat> I think how that will manifest itself more through a lens of a long-term buy and hold the asset as a small Oh, the same thing. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of crypto, and I think it's really interesting asset class to add into the mix. What we are do what we are doing is really trying to figure out: is there a way that we can offer crypto with a guided wrapper so that we can help educate along the way? I think that's very important. People are very ignorant to some of this stuff. It's brand new. I mean, it's not it's on face value. It's brand new technology to the mainstream. I mean, look, my dad can't even use a uh, a touchscreen phone hardly. You know, I mean, sometimes people need some help. He's also 70, but anyway, cryptocurrencies are on FinCEN's first national priorities list. The financial surveillance agency is pointing a finger at crypto in its new plan to combat terrorism financing. So just to give you an idea of the stuff that it is listed with on this list, it is corruption, cybercrime, and relevant virtual currency considerations, terrorist financing, fraud, trans transnational criminal organization, activity, drug trafficking, human trafficking, and proliferation financing. So far, the agency's list of priorities is not connected to any policies. According to FinCEN's statement, the agency will issue regulations at a later date that will specify how financial institutions should incorporate these priorities into their risk-based AML programs. FinCEN has been wrestling with its approach da, 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 since late 2020 when a hotly debated rule was floated by the Treasury that would require crypto exchanges to identify personal wallets making large transactions. The IRS, also another agency of the Treasury Department, made headlines in 2016 and earlier this year for, it, for issuing controversial John Doe summons to crypto exchanges for names associated with large con, uh, transactions. Uh, the Treasury is particularly concerned about cyber-enabled financial crimes, ransomware attacks, and the misuse of virtual assets that exploits and undermines the innovative potential, including through laundering of illicit proceeds. 
Finson sees virtual currencies as a substantial financial innovation, but says they are the preferred form of payment for a variety of illicit activities, including ransomware, illicit drugs, and even used by some of the highest priority threat actors to advance their illegal activities and nuclear weapons ambitions. So that, I mean, I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, they're saying it is. But that's a big deal if that is true. And I, I mean, if that narrative starts to take off, oof. Um, some some FINRA news here. They have ordered Robinhood to pay $70 million due in part to significant harm the platform has caused to its users. Once again, Robinhood looking like some shit. Regulators said the trading app should pay restitution to users like the 20-year-old who committed suicide after an erroneous negative balance appeared in his account. And that's a pretty big deal, man. You know, uh, here it is. Regulators said the firm is responsible for paying $7 million in restitution to customers who reported seeing inaccurate negative cash balances in their accounts. The body referenced Alexander Kearns, a 20-year-old who committed suicide in June of last year after an erroneous negative balance of more than $730,000 appeared in his account. In addition, FINRA ordered the trading platform to pay more than $5 million to users affected by Robinhood's outages between 2018 and 2020, alleging that many users had lost up to tens of thousands of dollars in trades the platform was unable to execute during significant market volatility. It's coming, people. And Gary Gensler has been quite, I wish I would have thought about it, but as I'm reading this, you know, Gary Gensler has talked about how he thinks they're going to have to come down on the exchanges is where this is all going to start. And, you know, Robin Hood, I believe, is more of a broker-dealer, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not positive, but uh, this is Biden's financial reporting obligation for cryptocurrency exchanges. This is uh, all about Canada up here and... Um, Biden's tax compliance agenda includes mandatory reporting by cryptocurrency exchanges about account holders. I'm not going to read this to you, but I will read the bullets. How cryptocurrency information reporting in the United States can spell trouble for Canadians with unreported cryptocurrency income. These are the first steps towards an international tax reporting regime for cryptocurrency exchanges. I'm telling you guys. The exchanges is where they're going to start with some of this, I, I think. Of course, you'll have enforcement all the time, but uh, expert note, we don't need that. On to the next one. Here is a clip that I saw digital asset investor share. I think he played about half of it. I'm just going to play the whole thing. I have not heard the second half, so I'm curious, and let's go ahead and check that out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, too, look forward to working with you. I appreciate you holding this hearing today, and I thank you. You, and I give a big thank you to our witnesses for uh, appearing before the committee. I look forward to all of your testimony. Financial technology and cryptocurrency are the future of the global financial system. In general, fintech lowers the barriers to entry to the traditional financial system and offers all consumers, no matter where they are, the ability to access convenient financial services at low competitive costs. Cryptocurrency is no exception. As we have seen from the huge consumer demand for these innovative assets, backed by technology that is permissionless, open, and private. Cryptocurrency allows people to transact with each other in real time across borders for very little cost in a way that is so transparent and verifiable that it maintains more trust, actually more trust, than traditional financial transactions with a third party intermediary. Most importantly, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology unlock access to opportunity. The open source nature of these technologies offer millions of Americans the opportunity to study, study the underlying code, develop blockchain projects, and launch their own businesses, all without having to ask anyone for permission. That's an incredible opportunity. Over the last few years, I've been fortunate to meet with many great crypto and blockchain innovators. The common refrain during our discussions is that they so badly want to develop their new crypto and blockchain ideas right here in the United States, but they don't because of continuing uncertainty with federal regulation and perhaps more importantly, the lack of enforcement of existing laws and regulation. They're afraid to launch new projects that, for example, might classify them to be a quote money transmitter, even though their work has nothing to do with money transmission. Still, the thought of having to comply with an overburdensome state-based money transmission licensing system in the United States 
is too much of a challenge for these entrepreneurs to be worth their time and their investment. So they head overseas where the regulatory compliance is more streamlined. I've also been told by two co-founders of a company who are in the midst of developing a new blockchain network that they wanted to hire American developers. But because there isn't a streamlined process at the SEC to determine what is a security, they couldn't pay American developers with their token. So they actually went out and hired a team of developers uh, in Europe instead, where they can confidently comply with existing regulation. As I mentioned, fintech and cryptocurrencies are the future of finance, but we're missing out as a country because American entrepreneurs are still unsure of how to navigate our existing regulatory system. This means high-tech jobs are going overseas and capital formation opportunities for everyday Americans are being missed. All part of the chilling effect that comes when we do not answer the questions that industry leaders and consumers are begging for. Questions like, what digital assets are a security? What digital assets are a commodity? What digital assets are currency? Answering these questions will keep innovation here in America and unlock new opportunities for every American to access. To conclude, let's, make, let's be clear that these things are already regulated, but we need, to clear, we, we need clarity in application and enforcement of the existing laws and regulation. There are also areas where we can and should streamline our regulatory framework to ensure that we realize and benefit from crypto investment and innovation right here in the United States. I look forward to learning from the witnesses how we can address these challenges, and I yield back the remainder of my time. Well, I think that guy hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's pretty pretty spot on if you ask me. Um, it is the future, and the lack of regulatory clarity. I mean, for any of the XRP holders that are still rolling through this video, we're about to get into that. I mean, that's exactly what is being dealt with. I mean, for Ripple, for Ripple employees, XRP holders. I mean, it's just the developers, the entire ecosystem. It's, it's crazy. Um, I wonder why the ex-fintech segment global lead at MasterCard isn't worried about the SEC lawsuit. Hmm, zero doubt. You know who else wasn't worried about is Rosie Rios because the train has left the station. Those are her words, not mine. SEC assault on Ripple provoke wider debate. Again, great article. Not going to go through the whole thing, but it does use a couple points. Uh, people use XRP as a currency. Many of these individuals, app developers, organizations, businesses, and others swear that they have never heard of Ripple prior to the case and never saw XRP as an investment contract in any company. Prior to the SEC action, XRP was openly traded on more than 200 currency exchanges. Many countries developing digital currencies, some of which may utilize the XRP ledger. The World Economic Forum noted XRP is the most relevant cryptocurrency for central banks. Financial regulatory authorities in Japan, Singapore, the UK, Switzerland, and the UAE have already declared that XRP is a currency and not a security. Some 360 different kinds of organizations which use the currency as a means of exchange, including wallets, marketplaces, money transfers, banks, and more than 150 consumer apps. Some firms pay international employees through XRP. Consumers use it to buy groceries and to subscribe digitally to Time Magazine. Uh, the you know this is bad style with the SEC. I am not even going to get into any of that. We know exactly what's going on in the SEC. You can smell it from here. Um, how does regulation create an elite investor class? Well, you know that's I think that's good and bad, but we need to get to the point where we all know what we can do. And then leading into a ripple test. This is what I found really interesting. Um, uh, they want to replace, some of these people are proposing that we replace the Howey test with a Ripple test for cryptocurrencies. Um, sorry, I, did, I lost my spot. Uh, where a more specific and relevant set of questions would determine the status of a digital token. The demand for a Ripple test is evolving whether the SEC wins its case or not. The conversation has moved beyond the SEC, not only because its credibility has been shaking by its startlingly bad arguments in the pretrial phase. There is a growing... Recognition that the treatment of XRP by the SEC has come to symbolize the U.S. government's fundamental misunderstanding of cryptocurrencies, decentralized ledgers, and blockchain technology and what they will mean to the global economy. For Deaton and millions of other users of the technology, XRP will either be a triumphant hero or a martyr, but its legacy will play a role in defining the future of the global economy and whether the United States will be a follower or a player. It is that big, people.
Zero doubt. Not financial advice, but I mean, come on. And then this was just that same article that went farther into that. Um, I'm not going to go through that at all. SBI Holdings touts XRP Ledger for NFT use and the tokenization of a variety of assets. The blockchain XRP Ledger has the ability to tokenize not only XRP, but also a variety of other assets. Uh, under the section, building more sustainable, scalable, and accessible future for NFTs with XRPL. Extremely low transaction fees. What is it? I think each XRP is a million drops. It charges 12, 12 drops. Uh, the crypto can be settled instantly with a low environmental impact because it does not rely on mining, making an attractive choice. Uh, the blockchain... No, same thing again. A blockchain certificate will ensure the authenticity of artworks is more reliable through a tamper-resistant and highly transparent blockchain mechanism. All cool to see that stuff coming to the ledger. Speaking of some of the ledger, we are super proud to share that starting today, my global ID and XRP Labs improve XRP Ledger without trust, trust account trustworthiness. Excuse me. The global ID platform offers personal profiles and government ID attestations. Zoom wallet verifies the XRPL accounts. So basically, you fire it up, you link all this. Um, you can, you, if your global ID profile contains at least one government ID, you, your account will show a blue check mark. And you know, this is a glow. I think this is super cool. Zoom wallet is like the native on the ledger XRP wallet. It's pretty dope, super secure. Um, but global ID, that is Greg Kids. Uh, Greg Kids Company. Where is Sorry, I didn't originally even plan on pulling this up, but it's pretty cool what they're trying to do. Um, you know, you can join groups, communicate, pay, get paid online. They're basically trying to create a situation where you all these things will be, you know, just tied to you. Um, that didn't even make sense how I said that, but one second, guys. Let's see if we can get some information here. Who we are. We are building a universal identity solution that's easy to use, ties users to unique names, and transcends borders and institutions. We want to build, or we build a self-sovereign identity platform that enables everyday action for people and for our businesses. And there's Greg Kidd telling you here, identity is the permission to act. In Global ID, we believe our identity is a right and a responsibility. It's the key to unlocking your social and economic potential, both in the physical and digital world. You know, and he just goes on and on and on. Greg Kidd is a winner. If there's ever been one, there he is. Um, also, well, I was 1% of the float of XRP, to my understanding. Um, that all, what's in, what's interesting about this though is it kind of, so you can see you'd have like a verification provider and you would get authorized through businesses. Um, you know, like here you have uphold, link to, like I, you can use it on those platforms and it's only going to grow. And basically what I was reading a short article on it earlier, it sounded like once you tied it to your Zoom wallet and your XRP thing, Basically, getting that blue check on your name would be like if some if I were to send you my address or my ID or whatever, you would know that it was mine for sure. And I think that's a big deal. And, and then that that will eventually streamline some stuff, which is what we're going to get into here. We talked about that company Clear, who's doing that biometric biometric scanners at airports and all these things. And uh, you know, there's this another company here called that wants you to gaze into the orb to collect your world coin. Uh, and they want to trade your retina scan for cryptocurrency. It's very interesting. Um, losing control of retina scan data even once could permanently up in the user's life. And that's not the best picture of this guy. It looks a little sketchy. It makes me not want to use it. I'm going to have to look more into that. Um, here is another cool video about banks pledging to reach net zero emissions, meaning cashless. Check this one out. This is about the ISO. Virtually all of their business is in countries that are committed to net zero. They should be committed to net zero and they should be part of the gold standard. If they November. haven't signed up by Glasgow, yeah. what does that tell us about those banks? Well, they're not fully committed to, uh, to uh, where their countries are committed. That's what it tells us. None of the banks were available for comment. None of the big Canadian... To uh, yes. where their countries are... 
See this? See this? There's Corda. There's Ethereum. You know, you see some pretty awesome names on here. Just keep watching this video. That's what it tells us. None of the banks were available for comment. None of the big Canadian banks have uh, signed up. Goldman Sachs, your former employer, hasn't joined the Net Zero Banking Alliance. Yeah. All of these banks lend. So let me let me flip to the banks. other side: HSBC, Barclays, uh, RBS, uh, Santander. You're a glass uh, half full, bank, man. And bank, I'm, bank I'm of America, just reality City, check. There's a lot City of work group. to done. There are big Th names there are that haven't lot, committed here. There, absolutely, Joel. Absolutely. And the question is for those institutions. Uh, is to get themselves in a position so they can make these commitments. And to be clear, these, commi these commitments are serious commitments. You're committing to net zero. You're committing to a five-year decarbonization plan. You're committing to how you're going to get there. You're committing to annual disclosure. Now, these are all sensible things. This is what uh, people want to see, it's, uh, and, it's, and it's what's necessary in order to move forward. What's your message to the boards and the senior management of these companies, to well, J.P. Morgan, to Wells Fargo, to Goldman Sachs? What's your message? Well, to it's very clear. I mean, there is a gold standard for net zero commitments. It's, it's interesting. I have some friends of mine that are kind of really involved in crypto. I mean, I think like the Bitcoin structure was quite brilliant. Yeah, it seems like there's some merit to Ethereum as well, and, and maybe some of the others. But you know, I'm not sure. It's like I'm not sure that it would be a good use of Tesla resources to get involved in crypto. I mean, we're really just trying to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And I mean, I think actually one of the downsides of crypto is that it computationally, it's like quite energy intensive. So like there had to be some kind of constraint on the creation of crypto. So, but it's very energy intensive to create like the incremental Bitcoin at this point. Pretty cool little video. Um, See what we got here. I'm a little, little mixed up. Big banks back Swift's new platform and ISO 2022 roadmap. Bank of China, BNY Mellon, BNB Paribas, City, Deutsche Bank, Standard Chartered, confirm their preparation for the platform as the cooperative detailed a roadmap that will roll out over the next 18 months. So, ISO 2022 over the next 18 months. Some of that's going to be getting rolled out. Now, we point we posted this. And some of this is a little older. You'll see that as we go through here. But, um, you know, here, this is from the Deutsche Bank. Bringing market infrastructure up to speed. And, you know, here it talks about changing over to the ISO 2022. Um, you know, the Euro Systems ISO 2022 implementation will follow a big bang approach scheduled for 2021. And I do find that to be interesting. Yes, I do love when you find old stuff like this it's very interesting um you know solving for liquidity it talks about ibm has been working closely with banks and central banks over the past 18 months da, 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 da. ripple is also trying to solve the cross-border liquidity issue while the x current platform provides better information and processing for a payment it's rec rapid or x rapid product provides a liquidity for cross-border payment by leveraging xrp the digital asset for a bridge currency um, you know, it says payment for U.S. dollars, which gets converted to XRP through a digital exchange and then locally converts to XRP instantly into Mexican pesos to make the payment. The whole process takes a matter of minutes, which is really seconds, down from a week or several days for traditional overseas payments. Uh, XRapid is seeing greater traction among payment providers, including Currency Direct, Mercury FX, via Americas, whereas the banks are not quite ready to take the plunge into the, the crypto space. Um... Also posted some of this from Genie, which was pretty cool. Um, there's Big Brad, you know, it's talking about all these companies, all these banks that are on board. And then you look you're right on Ripple's website. The world is converging on a new global standard, the de facto global data standard for modern payments. Ripple is now part of the standards body, the first. I, mean, I don't know why I tried to highlight a photo. The first member focused on DLT technology. So, you know... Ripple is helping shape the new world of payments all while reducing operational overhead for financial institutions on RippleNet. 
And then, then this one I thought was funny. Work with Ripple and use XRP or work with R3, which uses the Quarter Settler and use XRP, and there's swift sweating. What's interesting about that, though, is there was this article a couple years ago. Uh, you know, it talks about the Quarter Settler. Um, it's aimed to facilitate global payments across enterprise enterprise blockchain networks with Ripple XRP as its base currency. Remember, R3 was partnered with uh, XRP for a while, and they had a weird, you know, weird settlement. The quarter uses the XRP. Um, it goes into how the quarter settler works, what does the quarter settler mean for the parties involved, and then SWIFT is partnered with Quora. So the trial would see the interaction of SWIFT payment standard framework GPI with R3's trade finance platform. Following the recent launch of our quarter settler, allowing for the payment of obligations raised by the quarter platform, it was a local extension to plug into SWIFT GPI. SWIFT GPI has rapidly become the new standard to settle payments right across the world. All the blockchain, blockchain applications running on quarter will thus benefit from the fast, secure, and transparent settlement provided to the SWIFT GPI banks. Um, and then, you know, you have this quote too. It was a couple years ago also. We are not replacing SWIFT. Um... Was it, who was this that they asked? Oh, Delatine was asked previously, who had previously worked for Swift, was asked whether she considered Ripple a competitor to the decades-old payment network. We are two different things. We're not replacing Swift, as a Swift has its own value. Take advantage of both, is what she's saying the bank should do. Swift is improving dramatically the way that these payments happen today, but it's still about the messaging. You still send a message to another party. I don't call it settlement because this is not settlement. It's around the fact that I can send a message in a faster way and I can track it. This is an improved improvement from previously where it could take days. Today, trillions of dollars are tied up in pre-funded accounts around the world by banks in order to make sure the exchange of value and the corresponding banking system is happening. But it's at a cost. Working capital for corporates is locked up. XRapid is helping users to have fast and low-cost provision of liquidity when they need it without the obligations of tying up capital in advance. We are obviously in an education phase when talking with banks. We still have to ensure that they understand that using this product is not around keeping XRP on the balance sheets. That's very important for the banks to understand because they would otherwise have to report that to the regulators. Obviously, I think it's great news that a company like Facebook enters this space. JP Morgan did a couple months ago. All this brings more credibility. So the more names, the better for us. It's just a validation that we have been saying for the last seven years. What we see is that their approach is not necessarily that they are going to work with the financial system. They want to completely transform it and bring a completely different experience. Our approach is different. We are working with the system, so we haven't been disrupting only. We are happy working with the banks, the payment service providers, and the regulators. And with that, I'm going to get off of here. My wife should be home soon. I'm tired, and I'm going to go relax. So just remember, Ripple is not trying to replace Swift. They can work hand-in-hand and complement one another. And also, Corda is going to be used. And it looks like the three of them could perform a trinity of uh, financial backing on the infrastructure side of things. I mean, it's it's exciting. I bought a bunch of XDC today. That's Again, that's not financial advice. I also bought some Casino Coin. I bought some IOS. Uh, and I definitely loaded up on HBAR again. Not financial advice, but you should do your own research and look into those assets. You might be interested. Good night, guys.